Uncle Sheila, thank you, um, Geraldine, Ramona, staff, people here, Vice President Nez, and joining us, uh, Chairman Hill and um, Delegate uh, Roddy and their work, and really being out there in D.C. and other places advocating lobbying for our nation's health. My kids and brothers, she so appreciate the work and our guests from DC, from the different re from three regions. Dr. Peters, again, appreciate your work, and uh, so we welcome all of you. Appreciate uh, your presence here, and also the conversation we had yesterday, and of course some of the things that we're dealing with. Um, one is healthcare facilities <coughs> construction, and we do have our consultation and the conversation we have over these facilities and usually in November uh, as it moves through the process and as you mentioned uh, the bottom way gap we're looking forward to that well first Dilcom. Uh, Dilcom is already in the uh, on the books I've not received the uh, uh, the package yet and so we know the amounts we know uh, we but we will be determining who will be uh, doing the construction the actual construction of Dil the Dilcom health facilities and that's yet to be determined, but we'll determine that when we get the package. So we're waiting for that, and we're running water line from one of the communities' uh, loop uh, to Dilcon so that there'll be adequate water sources to water source to run the facilities, which was a, an issue for us. So that's been resolved, or in the process of being resolved. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Of course, we just dedicated the one at Kienta. Uh, we've had issues over the years and finally got on the priority listing. And the monies followed that, and uh, was unfortunate uh, uh, that monies were taken from the facilities for the settlement. Uh, the uh, uh, the union workers, the settlement there, we the largest chunk of dollars uh, from Indian country around the nation, the largest amount was taken from the Kienta facilities, and so we've had some issues there in terms of the need to upgrade are to bring in uh, more quality uh, equipment, uh, scanners, those types of things. And But dedication went well. We're looking forward to the community's excited about that. Uh, so they'll come this next. And by the way, Gap, the clinic there that's going to be going up at uh, Pueblo Pintado uh, is also on the list. And so we're looking forward as as um, each of those facilities are built. And we understand that this is progressive, meaning that uh, Dilcon is coming up, and then other facilities nationwide are also in between uh, Dilcon and Bottaway. So it would be at least a few more years before we get to Bottaway, we understand that. And then a few more years before we get to Pueblo Pintado, uh, because there are other facilities being built across the nation. And uh, so appreciate that. Uh, and also um, Medicaid, you mentioned that. And the study that was done where the nation wants to assume Medicaid. We want to provide those services, and we met with Congresswoman from Albuquerque to help us in terms of structuring the le legislation. And, but the states, we know, will resist not taking uh, on Medicaid because it's going to impact their funding, it's going to impact their programs, we know that. And we've already been told that. So there'll be some lobbying against now the nation assuming we Medicaid uh, because the states don't want to give up the dollars that they now get on behalf of Navajo, uh, members of the Navajo Nation. And, and they do get quite a bit of monies uh, that the state uses and much of, a lot of it goes to overhead costs uh, so they can hire people uh, to carry out the work. And we want to use dollars for the same purposes and put our people to work. And so we know that when we bring Medicaid in, it's going to open up employment for uh, health workers and other types of uh, employment that we need on this nation because uh, we are almost at 50% unemployment on this nation. And those types of programs, not the nation assuming those, will really help us lower the, uh, the unemployment rate. So plus, we believe that it's going to raise the quality of care, the quality of service, because now you have Navajos serving Navajos, uh, using the language, using the culture, and using the, the, the plan system, the that we have on the nation. So we're looking forward to working through uh, the hurdles and the barriers that are there. We have recognized that to assume Medicaid. And, but we are ready to do that. And, uh, and also homeless veterans, we appreciate HUD. 
designated Navajo as one of the pilots for BASH program. And we know that BASH has been out there being utilized by non-tribal entities for years. So we finally have been approved by HUD to, for Native American tribes to, to incorporate BASH into their programs, which is providing vouchers to veterans that are homeless uh, so that, they, so that they're, to eliminate homelessness among veterans of the nation and then on Navajo also, so we appreciate that. And also, uh, the agreement was made recently between HUD and VA administration to utilize Nahasta money to build homes for veterans. So we're in the midst of that, and our TDHC designate is uh, Navajo Housing Authority, and through tribal action and approval, uh, Navajo Housing Authority was designated as the official recipient of Nahasta money. Uh, to address the house in on Navajo. And so because of the HUD VA agreement, uh, that is now in place. So we're now developing uh, a strategy to make that happen in terms of building homes for veterans. And then, of course, we have the ongoing issue of um, uh, this uh, co-occurring disorders and substance abuse on the nation. And 80% of all crimes committed on the nation is related to alcohol and substance abuse. So we know that when we address substance abuse on the nation, that will automatically lower crime, criminal acts on the nation. We did uh, re-criminalize 27 uh, uh, criminal acts that were decriminalized back a few years ago. And so we did increase the number of the days that a person can be incarcerated, and also multiple years in terms of up to nine years uh, the nation can incarcerate somebody. Uh, three years and then uh, six other years, so that uh, nine years. So we've, we've done, from the legal standpoint, we've, um, but we need now help in terms of opening up uh, mental health facilities, which we don't have on the nation. We're, we're working on opening some. We did open some, but it's, it's not functioning as we would like for it to be. And a lot of it is lack of personnel, especially at a professional level. And uh, so that's what uh, we're dealing with, but substance abuse. Uh, the buildings communities of hope talking directly to students uh, both from middle school and uh, high school level has been really uh, has made an impact and will continue to make an impact on the nation so we uh, those are needs that we have and you mentioned your meeting with uh, Senator Dahl Heinrich and also Congressman uh, Luhan and we've done the same thing and uh, our big concern always has been the revolving door is that uh, you bring an intoxicated Navajo to the facilities, they spend a day, two days, and uh, then now they can get uh, back out to the community, so we've released them. Uh, but without any ongoing uh, counseling uh, from a professional, and so we really would like to see more of a longer term uh, health care for individuals who are battling substance abuse meaning 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. If we can uh, put them in the facilities that will hold them for that long, that length of time, rather than just a day, two days, just to sober them up and put them back on the street. And that's what we uh, communicated with Senator Heinrich, with Senator Yudal, and also um, uh, Congressman uh, Luma. And we've had multiple meetings with the three uh, uh, elected officials, and we've expressed that over and over. So. Uh, that Navajo Nation is willing to support these long-term uh, care for our people that are out on the street uh, dealing with alcohol abuse and so forth. So we need more support also from the city of Gallup. Is that Navajo Nation has been contributing 12 times more than the city of Gallup has put into funding uh, the program. And uh, so this, and that's where our people buy alcohol. That's where most of the licenses are. That's where we have more package stores and, uh, and alcoholics uh, businesses in Gallup per capita than anywhere in the country. So there, so alcohol is huge revenue for the city of Gallup, and they create the problem. They can fix it by removing, by lowering the number of licenses that are issued, but they will not do that. And we've already put that on the table, and the. Uh, the political force that exists in Gallup protecting alcohol sale uh, is very powerful. And they are highly funded, well funded. And as a result, 
uh, it's an uphill battle from that standpoint. So that's why we're saying, the city of Gallup, why are you putting up 100,000 when we as a nation have been putting 1.2 million? And so the discrepancy is there, and they're saying, it's your people, it's your problem, but they create it. And that has always been our position. And our position with Senator Udall, Senator Heinrich, is that uh, let's provide services that's long term rather than short term. We don't want revolving door. We, want to, we, want to, we don't want to be a part of that kind of service to our people. The um, suicide prevention, there are days when uh, at one point a year ago, almost a year ago, we've had 12 weeks of a Navajo person committing uh, suicide. And we've had some recent uh, suicide uh, has occurred on the nation. And as a member of uh, the Secretary Travel Advisory Council, we've taken on a national, um, a, a, a national emphasis in fighting suicide, beginning with a tribal leaders uh, con uh, consultation summit in D.C. that will be upcoming, and follow that by a nationwide media um, uh, using uh, 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 developing videos, those types of things, posters that will follow that. And then, of course, uh, the big issue is database, is that we lack data to make good decision on suicide, both attempted suicide and uh, those that have uh, taken their lives. And getting data, hard data, is, has been very uh, difficult, even though the hub has been created by, by, by CSTAC, but still the issue of getting information from IHS facilities, uh, from uh, clinics regarding suicide attempts and, uh, and those that have actually taken their lives. Getting data has been very difficult for us. And, and it's not just Navajo, it's nationwide, as expressed by members of the Advisory Council, the Secretary's Advisory Council, which I'm a member of also, so with, this, with the Vice President. And, um, and we do have ongoing, um, but we are addressing that through the building communities of hope and going to a school every Thursday. Uh, our team is out there along with um, uh, our, our staff people and do a, uh, an effective job in terms of talking to students directly uh, about them being special, that we love them, uh, that um, uh, it's just to really to help them understand that they, that they are special to the nation. Uh, aging is our HIV is also an issue out there for us uh, and our members of our nation contract HIV on an ongoing basis and it's not a huge health issue but we know that it's something that can become that and we need we appreciate our staff addressing it in terms of information that is put forth and um, the the aging uh, related issue we're, we're a young nation but we also uh, have many, many elders out there that are uh, getting up into their 100 years of age. Uh, and so we, uh, aging issues, uh, we, uh, that's always an ongoing uh, challenge for us in terms of creating our building senior centers where seniors can uh, communicate, where they can relate to each other, where they can uh, uh, really uh, develop good, uh, healthy lifestyles and, and also to incorporate them into our school system so that our children are here from the elders and uh, this is just all a part of the effort to uh, to utilize our elders and they're the ones that are the foundation of the Navajo Nation of culture and they're the keeper of our vision, they're the keeper of our culture, of our prayers, of our ceremonies, of who we are as a nation so we value them and we want to be able to relate to them in that fashion. So uranium, we did uh, get a settlement of $980 million. Most of it will be handled by US EPA Region 9, and, but we want to first be able to address all uranium issues and the contamination that has occurred because of the mining over the years. We are now feeling the impact of it, where whole regions of groundwater are now contaminated with uranium arsenic, uh, those types of, um, of uh, material that is uh, impacting the health of our nation. And through the cohort study that you mentioned, we like we asked the CDC to uh, to continue funding that for at least another uh, for
another three years, three to five years. And so that's on the table in our discussion with CDC because uh, they're now looking at plant life, animal life, as early as they have been studying generational issues with uh, uranium contamination. And in the last preliminary report, uh, they have uh, shared with us that there's an impact on DNA of Navajo citizens uh, through the second generation. And so, which is alarming to us that this, this kind of contamination, exposure to uranium, that has that kind of impact through the second generation. And, and we're talking 40 years there. Uh, but we know that it may be even longer than that. They're studying to see if it will uh, impact Navajo DNA through the fourth generation even. But, uh, but we know as from the preliminary report that we receive is uh, second generation. Again, uh, that's an ongoing issue. There are a lot of contamination that still need to be addressed. Uh, and the inadequate, insufficient uh, uh, rehabbing of the mines are there, we know that. We went and visited them, and we stood on a rehab mine, reclaim mine, and the Geiger counter that the EPA person brought with her, uh, it, they, she told us the next day to max it out when, when she stood with us on top of the mound uh, where the uranium mine was reclaimed and so she said I don't know how high it was but it's like getting x-ray uh, for the time that we were standing there on the mound so we know that those types of things exist all over the nation over 500 uh, uranium mine needs to be uh, rechecked and a lot of them needs to be uh, redressed but through the settlement we'll be looking at 54 mines uh, from again all over the nation including Shiprock uh, the Cove area, out in the western, the Cooper City area, and a lot of places in between, and also Church Rock area. Uh, so contamination is there, and we need to continue addressing that. We'll be addressed in terms of getting good water from the river. Uh, we are now in discussion over water rights, getting water from LCR, the main stem, and from good uh, aquifer water sources. So we're looking at those things. The um, uh, again, uh, we appreciate the funding of TANF and we like to maintain the flexibility within that uh, program for Navajo Nation. And also the current funding level for TANF needs to be maintained. Uh, there's something that our people utilize extensively, foster care, Tava 4E, uh, the Guardianship Assistance and Adoption Assistance Program. Uh, that needs to be addressed and the foster care, the whole foster care issue something that is important within Navajo Nation culture. And also the uh, Navajo Treatment Center for Children and Their Families. Uh, we, uh, we're, we have a lot of abuse on the nation that occurs for various reasons. And so we need a place where uh, women and children can go and be protected from abusive spouses and abusive family members. And so those are ongoing issues that we need to develop more on Navajo Nation because that's prevalent and we need to protect our children, we need to protect our, our, our women from being abused uh, by spouses and as we've uh, seen and dealt with yesterday, within the last few days, uh, the death of one of our children. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate that her life was taken, she was abused and that uh, a horrible death that she experienced. We don't want our children to go through that. So to have uh, a treatment center for our children and families is important to our foundation. 